Tragic house fire in Chula Vista this morning. Firefighters scrambling after a home was engulfed in flames. After an early release, the former sailor convicted in a deadly crash off the Coronado Bridge, now looking to clear his record. And for the first time in its 100 year history, women graduating from San Diego's Marine Recruit Depot. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. And welcome to ABC 10 News at 11. I'm Jim Patton, so good to have you with us. And I'm joined remotely by my co-anchor, Virginia Cha, and 10 News meteorologist Megan Perry. Great to see the two of you as well. We'll be with you very shortly. Well, investigators still working to figure out what started this house fire in Chula Vista that claimed the lives of two children. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell has the emotional morning for the family, neighbors, and firefighters. We want to warn you, the video and the details of this story are disturbing. Those are the cries from a man helplessly trying to put out this raging fire that engulfed his Chula Vista home. Still inside, two children that didn't make it out of the house in time. Their mom telling our 10 News breaking news tracker, quote, my babies are inside. The fire started just after midnight on Coralwood Court. As firefighters worked to get a handle on the fire, Neighbors stood in shock, watching this horrific scene play out. The man who tried to put out the blaze before crews arrived had burns and cuts to his body. He was treated at the scene and was later taken to the burn center at UCSD Medical Center. Fire officials say the mother was not injured. Hours later, fire investigators returned to the house, trying to piece together what started this fire. Neighbors we spoke with say, though they didn't know the family well, it breaks their heart thinking about the two young kids that died. And when I find out about the kids, I get very upset. Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. Well, this morning, a former sailor convicted for a crash off the Coronado Bridge that killed several people is back in court. Last year, Richard Zapolio was released from prison early, nearly three years into a nine and a half year sentence. He was released for good behavior and pandemic protocols that aim to clear space in detention facilities. Today, Zapolio's legal team is requesting his convictions be expunged and that his parole be ended early. We will, of course, keep you updated as we learn more. Well, history being made this morning at MCRD San Diego, the first gender integrated company will graduate from the Recruit Depot. ABC 10 News reporter Nate Holmes joining us while the ceremony is getting underway here live. Nate, this is a milestone in the nearly 100 year history of MCRD. Virginia, good morning. This uh, morning, five platoons are graduating from the training depot. One of them is a group of 53 female recruits, and this is the first time MCRD will have women graduating in the company. Now, the ceremony just wrapped up within the last minute, right before we came to you live. So the recruits are now meeting with their families. But I talked with private first class Emily Zamudio about her experience as a recruit. Roles here are really important to determine like future cycles of females coming here. Let's go, push, push, dig deep. Let's go. Mentally, it was challenging at some points. Some days were definitely harder than the others. One foot in front of the other. Let's go. Mostly challenging when we went up north to Camp Pendleton, due to like hiking and the, the hills. Like I went internal and I was like, oh no, I was like, I'm not going to make it. I was like, it's only going to get harder, especially going infantry. Um, you know, because in infantry you hike a lot with heavier weight and it's longer, longer routes and hikes and stuff like that. So I definitely got into my head a majority of the time. But um, at the end of the hike, you know, I told myself, like, I got through it. Yes, I was in pain. Yes, I was struggling, but I got through it, you know, thanks to my sisters as well, who also pushed me through. Um, but it's kind of just that, that mindset you got to have that, yes, it sucks, but in the end, like, no matter what, you're going to get through it. And, you know, quitting's not an option for me. This is just step one. This is just the beginning of my um, life with the Marine Corps. 
my family has been supportive since day one, since I told them that I wanted to join the military. You know, they made sure that this branch was the branch that I wanted. And again, the recruits are now meeting with their family after the ceremony just wrapped up within the last two minutes or so. The recruits completed 13 weeks of the most difficult entry level training. And next, Zamudio tells me that the recruits will be heading to Camp Pendleton, well, they, where they will begin their next duty as Marines. Live at MCRD San Diego, Nate Holmes, ABC 10 News. Nate, just that footage was exhausting. Thank you for that story. Well, now that the vaccine rollout, the Biden administration coming out in support of a patent protection waiver on coronavirus vaccines. Supporters saying it could ramp up global distribution, but critics say it hurts companies that innovated during development. It's all coming as health officials express optimism about the outlook in the U.S. heading into the summer. ABC's Whit Johnson has more. This morning, the CDC releasing new projections showing that high vaccination rates, continued masking and social distancing could bring a sharp decline in COVID cases by July. We are not out of the woods yet, but we could be very close. Still, threats remain like variants and questions about how long vaccines will provide protection. On Wednesday, Moderna saying that should vaccine booster shots become necessary, early data suggests theirs will be effective against strains from South Africa and Brazil. This is a very good piece of news because it suggests not only can we boost people's immunity back up and keep it high during the pandemic, but also that we can specifically boost it up against some of the new variants of concern. And now a new focus on kids. Canada announcing it has authorized the Pfizer vaccine in 12 to 15 year olds. As the U.S. awaits a decision for that same age group any day, the Biden administration doubling down on its promise to act immediately. We know that kids want to go to camp this summer. We know parents want them to be safe, so we are prepared to move as quickly as we can after any kind of authorization. And as vaccination rates increase, some bright news for New York City, once the center of the pandemic, now making strides. In two weeks, the Yankees and Mets will begin seating fans in separate areas at the ballparks. Sections for vaccinated fans will be at 100% capacity. Sections for unvaccinated fans at 33%. And Broadway, slated to open mid-September for shows at 100% capacity. Back to baseball, teams across the country are offering all kinds of incentives to help get people vaccinated. The Mets and the Yankees are now offering free ticket vouchers for people who get their shots at the games. Whit Johnson, ABC News, New York. And here's a quick look at our local situation. 219 cases recorded in the latest daily testing, but cases in San Diego are generally trending downward. Positivity rates between 1 and 3 percent in the last month. About half of the population has gotten at least one vaccine dose, and the county is giving its weekly update this afternoon, and we'll have more on that this evening. You can also get the latest information on our 10 News smartphone app. Well, this morning we are following a developing situation in Idaho where a gunman opened fire at a middle school. Police say they do have someone in custody. Three people, two students and adult, suffered some non-life-threatening injuries. Students were evacuated to a nearby high school to be picked up by parents and guardians. So far, no details yet on the suspected shooter. Well, a good Samaritan springing into action as a dangerous situation unfolded in Mission Valley this morning. Witnesses say they came across this car on the 15, about 5.30 a.m., and the driver was passed out. People stopped to help, but as they did, a pileup started. Cars slamming into the car of the passed out driver as well as into each other. The crashes trapped that initial driver in his car as it caught fire, but a pair of quick-thinking onlookers came to his rescue. When I turned around and saw a big ball of fire, that uh, gentleman that was stuck in the car there, uh, I came around the side of the car and another gentleman came up and helped me get him out of the seatbelt, pulled him out of the car uh, moments before it was all completely involved. At least two people were hurt. It is not clear why that initial driver was unconscious.